Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of True State Talks, because I would say I started True State Talks as a series on this YouTube channel back in 2017, 2016, 2017, for the reason that I'm about to talk about, and that is to release more music and have more people hear that music that I release. So today, I thought I would take you through the track listing of what is technically my debut album. I've never released a full-length album. This is nine tracks of original music. It is, however, just me and this Martin OM20AE, and I feel like I'm finally putting this guitar to, to good use. And I'm not entirely sure if I would have been able to make this record without this type of guitar. Because, you know, I, I, I've always been very excited about the idea of capturing uh, the best quality I possibly can. And with this guitar, I have no excuse. And then as I've gotten older, my voice has matured. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to be releasing these nine tracks. And I thought I would run through the track listing, just tell you a little bit of a backstory about each of the songs. And... Yeah, just have this as part of, you know, the whole release plan. Like it comes out on streaming services 1st of December. So by the time you're possibly watching this, um, it should be out everywhere, almost out everywhere. Then there is a physical copy available, which will be hand signed and not hand delivered, but it will be <laughs> it will be shipped by uh, by myself and and my father. So um, it would be amazing if you could support the record by buying the physical copy too, and then you have something physical. It's not just on your phone. It's it's it feels tangible. And for those that don't have CD players, it it you will be sent a digital high quality, very high quality download. So um, you know, win win basically. The first song on the record is a song called She that I was just playing the opening there. When embarking on this project, I thought it would be a really nice thing to start with the first song I ever wrote that I'm still playing. And she, you know, was written when I was 15. And the story behind it is that I went to this Suzanne Vega concert with my mother and Norina Paolo, this uh, other English singer-songwriter, amazing pianist, amazing, amazing vocal, like just amazing, flawless performance. She was supporting, and we went and met her in half time in the interval. I got her record, and she was signing the record for me. And my mother sort of said, "Oh, Mary is a musician, um, and she plays guitar and she sings." And Narina asked me, "Oh, do you write songs?" And I went, "Not yet." And I went home and I wrote the song. Track two is a song called Restaurant Window, which is a bit of a true story. And it was based on my time in Bristol. I saw you through the restaurant window. I saw you sat at the bar where we first met. This is actually the only song out of the 18 over volume one and volume two that is co-written and co-written with these two amazing songwriters that I met in Los Angeles, actually. They're both British, Lily and Owen. And yeah, they helped me finish it. So it's the only song I've ever co-written that I actually play, but I'm really proud of it. And it made it on to this first volume. Then it goes into a very bluesy number. This is, it's usually capo five, but I'll just save a bit of time where it's, it's called Church Bell. And recently I actually ended up recording a music video for this, which will come out very, very soon, where I, I, I found the perfect town because it's all about, um, it's kind of like a fictional, uh, inspired by a true life story, but but then sort of 
I got a, a little I got a little bit in the weeds with it with, with the fiction and creating up this sort of scenario in my head but basically someone is you know based up the hill then there's a church in between and then the other person is based at the bottom of the hill and they meet at church on Sundays and um yeah it's just a really cool bluesy I'm it's just like one of my favorite songs that I actually play so then we get into sort of a bossa nova groove with drop drop slow tears drop Drop, drop, slow tears drop. This opening lyric was inspired by a piece I was singing in choir when I was at university. And I just loved the lyrics. So I thought I would make it sort of an ode to that much more classical piece of music. And there is a lot in sort of choral pieces of music where they might actually have the same title but it might be a completely different uh, interpretation of of the words basically so if it was already an existing poem a lot of composers will take those words and then and then go off from there but I kind of wrote this as an ode and my own interpretation and the lyrics are obviously other than that title they're completely new um, but then we get very very emotional I think um and that's with make me an offer which is a song that's probably always like slightly terrified me because it's very personal I think I wrote it when I was 21 and yeah I don't know it's it's a little bit more open to interpretation than maybe some of my other songs where some of my other songs are just literally like a story and that's it. Whereas this one's, a, the lyrics are like a little bit more generic. You could definitely apply, you know, possibly what you're going through right now to it or how you're feeling about, you know, romance and everything like that. Um, and it has a really good key change in it. And that's not how it goes. That was written when I was 21. And then the next song was written in 2019. So it does feel like this record has taken 15 years to make. And the next song is One to the West Coast. Some of you might have seen in one of my recent uploads that I actually included the actual performance, the video capturing the audio that made it onto this record. And One to the West Coast is... <laughs> very percussive in the guitar part and then the lyrics are very cutting <laughs> um, you know me and I think I'm really proud of the lyrics on that one actually I think it's a cool concept and I've been writing songs for so long now but I don't know I'm still always just trying to improve and I think I've still got a long way to go totally know that especially with the lyric game but yeah, proud, proud of the lyrics on that one. Then this next song is a, is a little bit of a, a short number. I don't think anyone will know it. Uh, it's called Lipstick Melts. And it's inspired by wintry evenings in Bristol, back when I lived there. Then Café Vivaldi is, again, a song I, I wrote when I was 19. And it's, again, just true, true story. Went to this open mic in New York City, experienced this whole new world full of amazing musicians. There were 30 spots. You kind of had to get there at basically, at, you know, 5 p.m. in the evening to start queuing to get a spot in this open mic then it was still lucky draw so you'd put your name in the hat and then it would be drawn so even if you were like one of the first people to sign up you could still pull 30 and I went the first time round didn't get a slot I hadn't arrived early enough arrived at like seven and it started at eight so you were outside at you know 5 p.m 
but this was a September evening, so it was nice and warm. Met a lot of cool people. And this guy, after this uh, amazing singer-songwriter, she stopped playing and he just said, hey, Tracy, you're the queen of dysfunction, in an American accent, obviously, which I'm not going to attempt now. And everyone just sort of went, yeah, like, her songwriting was so amazing. And it, it, it definitely, you know, there are a lot of singer-songwriters that really are just so autobiographical and it's just so authentic that it definitely inspired me to write in that avenue. But um, I'm also proud of Cafe Vivaldi and I kind of have left space in the recording, in, the, in just the solo acoustic recording that's coming out, for a cool solo from someone I have in mind. But when I do the full production of it, yeah, there will be a, a really awesome solo off over this. <laughs> Last but not least, I get to detune actually. One of my favorite tunings, some of you might know, you just detune your A string down to a G. And this last song is a love letter to the place I grew up, and that's Salisbury. So it's called Spire. And yeah, it's a bit of a finger-picking song. I'm really excited for you to hear it. Please support the record by buying a physical copy, then obviously stream it share it with your friends, tag me in Instagram stories every time you're listening to it, just spread the love. This is the format that I want to keep uh, replicating every time I manage to get into the studio, just lay down loads of, of the new material I'm working on constantly, then craft these albums and really just be able to demonstrate myself as a real singer-songwriter and have a lot of material there for you to listen to and then use these as the sort of shell of a song to then make the full productions that I also enjoy doing. So, yeah, I hope you like it. And, yeah, everything that you need to know is in the description below. But otherwise, I will see you after my debut album has come out. All right, see you very soon. church down there